Okay, so today is um, September 8th, 2024. So we'll begin and start the session wherever we stop yesterday. So yesterday we talked about actually um, completion rules. So in that, basically, we did uh, an exercise in which we talked about how each document get a status completed. So that is what we discussed yesterday. So we took an example of inquiry. We took an example of quotation. We took an example of sales order. And then inquiry has item category AFN, quotation has item category AGN, sales order has item category 10. And then we saw that uh, item category inquiry, item category in uh, quotation, item category in sales order, they are assigned to completion rules. And based upon the completion rule, system basically describe and uh, perform how the item would be set to a status complete. That is what this basically means. Okay. Set to the document complete. So that is the completion rule exercise which we did yesterday. <clears throat> Thank you everyone. And now we want to talk about a concept called copy control. Copy control. In the copy control, there are two words, copy and control. Controlling what get copied. So the different documents in SAP SD, inquiry, quotation, sales order, delivery, billing. In each of these documents, there is something called copy control. Copy control tells me that what document can be controlled into what document. So what is copy control in the simplification? So copy control, copy control allows us to copy certain doc types into certain target doc types. Okay. Certain source doc type to certain target. Now, source document type could be, for example, sales order. So we have a letter say sales order, and we want to copy the sales order into a target document type, let us say um, delivery. So which order can be copied into which delivery document type? Okay. So between sales order and delivery, there should be a copy control. And only if there is a copy control, you can copy a sales order into delivery. You can copy a delivery into invoice and various other document which we use, which we create with each other. That is what is copy control. Now this copy control is there in all different documents. Like in our class, we created or talked about and discussed 21 different scenarios inquiry, quotation, sales orders, different type of delivery, different type of billings, different type of sales orders. We talked about consignment process, rush order process, cash sales process, and many other different processes which we discussed and we talked about. So in each of these documents we see here, allowed, 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 allowed. Now, what is the allowed basically means? Allowed basically means um, 
whether we allow quotation to copy in sales order, yes or no. If you allow, you can set it up. If you not, you don't set it up. If you want order to copy to delivery, yes or no. If you allow, you can copy. If you don't, you don't copy. Same thing. Do you want delivery to be copied to invoice or not? If you allow, then it copies. If not, it does not copy. Okay. That is what this basically means. So here we have a choice which document to be copied into each. So now I wanted to check uh, configuration area. So there are various configurations. So configuration config for copy control. For the co copy control, there are uh, various tables. There are multiple tables. So this configuration is there in multiple tables. So now where we have these tables or copy control tables. Is my voice coming to everyone? Can you guys hear me? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, just good morning all. Okay. Good. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you, guys. <coughs> okay, so now let's let us look at the configuration. So there's a configuration of copy uh, control and there are various uh, copy control. So we will uh, look into those configurations. So for the configuration, we go to SPRO. So like as we do, so we'll go to SPRO. So configuration of copy control. Now let's go to the configuration. So if you go to cop configuration and uh, this configuration is there in multiple places actually. So if you go to sales and distribution okay. and um, if you go to sales and when you go to sales then here we have a first menu path here. It says maintain copy control for sales document. So maintain copy control for sales documents. If I click into it, then what do we see? Now comes two different tables. Now the first one here is copy control sales document to sales document. Now, what is the example of sales document to sales document? So, for example, if you want to copy quotation into sales order, if you want to copy inquiry into quotation, if you want to copy inquiry into sales order, so that is an example of copying a sales document to sales document. So the first example, so the first table here is copying sales document to sales document. So sales document to sales document. That is the first example which we have. Then we have a okay. That is what this basically means. <coughs> Sales document to sales document. Now there's another table here. Copy control billing document to sales document. So second table here is that align billing document to sales document. So that basically means <clears throat> when we are copying a billing document. So let's say I have an invoice. And from the invoice, I wanted to copy that customer invoice into sales document. Okay, let's understand that. So if we, we can see here in the sales order also. So when I go to log, um, logistic, I go to sales and distribution, I go to sales, I let us create order, hit enter. And here we have a create with reference. So if you go back here and then I have a create with reference. Now, if you see create with reference, what are the choices? <clears throat> so choices which we have here is inquiry. 
So it's a sales document to sales document. Quotation, sales document to sales document. Order, order to order. You can copy one order into another order. Contract, you're copying sales document to another sales document. A scheduling agreement. If I want to copy a scheduling agreement in sales order. So this is an example of a sales document to sales document. And then there's a billing document. So that basically means you can copy one billing document into another billing document. That is what this basically means. And that is why we have these two tables. Sales document to sales document, billing document to sales document. And then we click on it. So this is it. Okay. And then this is one. And then if you go back to the billing, so there's a second. So there is another table, another configuration here. And that configuration, if you go up to billing section, and if we go to billing document, for example, and here we have a copy control for the billing document. <clears throat> this is another table for the copy control. Now, why there are so many tables? Because copy control can have a multiple combinations, sales document to sales document, billing to sales, sales to billing, delivery to sales order, sales order to delivery, delivery to billing. So different document type can be copied into different document types. The so source document type could be multiple categories and target document type could be multiple categories. That is why we have all these different permutation combinations. So if we go back here, maintain combination. Now see here, <clears throat> there are four uh, tables, sales document to billing document. So we have option. So sales document to billing document. Now why sales document? What is example of sales document to billing document? So example that could be which we did in class that I'm creating a customer credit memo request and I'm copying customer credit memo request into billing document. What is another example? We did a cash sales order. Now cash sales an example where you are creating a sales order directly into billing document. Now we have another company, billing document to billing document. So another example is billing document to billing document. <clears throat> now what could be example of billing document to billing document? So for example, I have a credit memo and I want to create another credit memo with reference to another document. So in that case, we can create billing document to billing document. That could be another example as far as SAP is concerned. Okay. So billing document to billing document. So that become an example of a billing document. Then there is a delivery document to billing document. So there is another example that is called delivery document to billing document. Now that happens like uh, when I'm creating a delivery document, then delivery document goes to the billing document. Right? We create a, this is a classical flow sales order delivery and from delivery to billing. So if you want to get delivery to billing, then it should be in this table. So these are the three combinations. Then there is a one more combination. So we saw this uh, tables. And then if you go back into the logistic execution, and if you go to in the logistic execution to the shipping, and here also we have a copy control, that is copy control for deliveries. So this is the copy control for deliveries. So there's another table that is called copy control for 
deliveries. <clears throat> so that is why if we see here, we have a different combination. This dog to this dog, this dog to this dog, this dog to this dog. And from billing to sales order. So because multiple combinations are possible, that is why there are multiple combinations of the source document to the target document. That is what we can define in the system. Okay, that is what this basically means. Copy that. So a sales document type from uh, OR to QT, from LF to OR, from F2 to LF, different documents possible. Then these are other combinations, billing document type. So different combinations. Many of those combinations we have done in the class as well. Now, how do we maintain copy control? Right. So I wanted to show, uh, create an order, create a sales document, sales order with the doc type, doc type Z010. Now Z010 is a doc type which we configured in our class, right? Okay. Now, if you go back here and uh, Z010 is a document type which we configured in our class and we hit enter. If I select a customer, if select a material, if I enter the quantity and then we save it. Okay, so see the message in the bottom, order SAD 821292 has been set. Okay, so we create a sales order. Now this is a sales order as we done multiple time. If you go back and create a delivery, and if you go back to the delivery here, and we try to create a delivery, then see what happens. Order cannot be delivered. Copying is not possible because an entry is missing in the table between Z010 and LF. Z0 and LF. So that basically means. So that basically means. Okay. And. Um, So now, what is this miscue? Copying is not possible because an entry is missing in the table TBCL LF0010. Two line item. Two line item. These two line item basically means when we're creating a copy control, copy control is defined as a header sales document to delivery. And then it is also defined at a line item, at an item category. That is why we are coming two entries here. So when we define copy control, so this is another point. So copy control, copy control is to be defined doc type to doc type item category to item category okay that is why we see here and in our case, both are missing. Now, if you see configuration also, this is the configuration. Now, see here, there is a header and there is item. There is a header, there is item. So, it's a doc type to doc type. And then there is item category. And configuration is missing at both. That is why here, say, 
doc type Z010 to delivery doc type LF. And then copying is the second one is for line item. And for the line item, there is a missing for this document of LF and item category Z010. And that is why we see here. And there is a header also. There is a line item. Also. So when we are defining so copy control, copy control is defined at a header level and item level. Now these are the different menu path, sales and distribution, copy control for sales document. And then this is what this basically means. So document type between the source document and target document. This is a configuration of the header level, also line item level. And if, if you have a schedule and category like in sales document to sales document, then you have to do between a schedule line level also. So that basically means which header document can copy into, um, into which target document. Okay. So that basically means we can define that also. So, and uh, we can, and then from item category to item category. So this is the item category of a sales document. This is the item category of the delivery document. This is, if in case of uh, sales document, there's a schedule and category also. We discuss that there is no schedule and category in case of delivery document. So if you see here, there is no, there's only header and item. There is no schedule line here because this is for delivery. Delivery does not have a schedule line. If you see position, so there's a delivery document of LF, delivery document of LF, and sales document of Z010, there's no Z010 here. And that is the problem. If I go to say, delivery document type LF and doc type OR, then we have it. So delivery doc type LF, OR, we have it. If I want to copy and I say from LF from G010, hit enter. only copy entry and we save it. So what we did from LF to Z010, we select detail and then now between doc type LF and Z010, there is a setting. So we did a configuration. So in the configuration, what we did, so we configured Copy control, copy control between sales stock type Z010 and uh, delivery doc type LF. Okay, that's what we did. So make a note of this. Okay. Says document is G0102 till document type help. Now here we have item category also. So here we have a item category. So Another thing which I want to talk here is a order requirement, combination requirement, header data transfer 001. Now, what is the meaning of it? That is also I wanted to discuss and talk about. Now, in the item category, there is nothing here. So, there is no item category. 
So here, go back. And if you go back to LF, to says document type 010, uh, LF, and uh, sales document type, let us say OR, which is a standard order. OR, so LF, OR. And if we select that, and here we have a line it. So here we have a line it. In the line it term, we have a different type of line it. Different type of line it. Okay. Now here we have item category. See this 172 item categories. One of item category we have is 10. See this 10. Is a standard item category. So these are the different. So that basically means target document this, sales document this, item category this, and here we have uh, some of these um, formulas also. Okay. Now what is this? We will talk about these formulas also. You know, like one hundred one. Hmm? So what is this 101 is, whatever this 699 is, right? What is this uh, 2 is? And we saw these numbers before also. So what are these numbers basically means? And what is the purpose of these numbers is? And that is, these are called different requirement routines. That also we will be discussing as well. I just wanted to show you these routines as well. Like what are these routines? Okay, so we go back. We go back. We go to position. I put a delivery document type LF. I put a sales document type as a Z010. And then we go back. Then we go to item. Okay. And then we can see that uh, item basically means different item category. And uh, here, no entry form. So we go to new entries. And we say here, my item category is Z010 because that is item category we configured. There is a requirement routine here and I select that as a 101. We'll talk about what is this 101 basically means. There's a data transfer routine and uh, we can have another transaction that is called 699 business trace transfer routine called 2 okay update document flow and we save it so now what happens so if my target document is this if my delivery document type is this, sales document is this, and item category is this, and I saved it, and if I want to go back and uh, created a delivery, now delivery is allowed. See here. So now I go to delivery. This was my order. Let me create this order again. So I go to VA01, order type Z010, hit enter. I enter the customer, enter the quantity. This is our document type. Okay. 
Okay. And then here we can save it. So 20293 has been saved. Now for this document, and we hit enter. Now delivery is created. Last time we were getting that message. And uh, now that message is not coming. That is how we set up copy control. So we did an exercise in which we see what is copy control. We saw that there is something called uh, copy control at the header level. We saw there is a copy control at the line item level. Okay. And earlier we saw that we were when we we're trying to create a delivery with the sales document type, that sales document type was not allowed. And then we set up the copy control between our sales document type and delivery and also for item category, then we have allowed creation of delivery from the sales document, which was not allowed before. Okay, that is what this basically means. Okay, we did that. Go back. So this is how we set up a copy control. Now, we have one thing left, one thing left, which is we have all these requirement routines, you know, 101, 6992. And if you go to header, and if you go here in the header also, then we have all these different uh, order requirements, 001, 6051, data transfer, 00. what are these? So these are the one thing which we want to further discuss. Now, these in SAP are called, there is a one term which I would like to learn, uh, one transaction code, and that transaction code is called VOFM. And the first and foremost, we have seen something called data transfer routines. Data transfer routines. Here we have a data transfer routine and this routine is 001. Now, what is this data transfer routine is doing? These routine, routine is a ABAP program. So when say routine, routine is a name of an ABAP program. So ultimately the 001, 051, 001, these are nothing but the name of ABAP program. What these programs are doing, these programs are providing certain rational logic, some logic. That logic could be related to certain requirements, some combination requirements, some data transfer requirements. So what is it says here? So it tells me data transfer routines control which how the field are copied from the reference documents. So what is the data transfer is doing? Data transfer is saying that how the data is being transferred. So 001. So let's look at this 001. Now this is the 001 at the header. Same way there is a 001 at the line item because we are copying header data and we are copying line item data. Which data? How do we control which data is copied? So we select that here, for example, and then here we have a something called, you know, source text. We click on this button. This is called source text. Source text basically means is a name of program. Okay. So this is choose the main program. And this is the program here. You don't need to read it. You're not a programmer. If you want to go back, if you want to see this, 
and this is the name of program following work areas header of this delivery this field this field all these field do not try to read this i'm just showing you this is data transfer routine and these are likp likp these are different name of tables if you want to read the documentation on this there's documentation here which basically allow you to define that what documents can be transferred in the header similarly at the line item also there's a 101 line item we check that also same thing in the line item as well and then in the line item also we can see the name of the program routine for data transfer of item data what data can be copied so these routines are nothing but the app program you're not a programmer you're not changing programmer but a web program can do it but what is the uses for us uses for us is that if we want to copy certain additional data then using a web programming programmer can control that that is what this basically means data transporting then here we have a something called copying requirement copy requirement i highlighted this area copy requirement requirement that check when you create a document with a reference if these requirements are not met in a particular case system issues a warning or error message if these requirements are not met what is the meaning of it the meaning of this is because if we copy one document to another document there could be certain pre defined conditions only if those conditions are fulfilled we can allow the copy of a source document into target document so if you see here if we go back and here we have a requirement 001 what is this uh, requirement so there is a requirement 001 so we want to see here go to text there is a program you can check now here we have routine for check of conditions what are those check of conditions if only if those conditions are met it will be allowed now what are those we can just look at the some the check that reference document is in order this one condition if it is not in order don't copy check if order is not blocked by credit check remember we did that exam example of a credit check and all that so when we put a delivery block system do not allow behind the scene this is the code of the program which is doing that remember with the delivery block and this block and that block this code is there check if order status from the header so status is checks if it is rejected or something don't allow yeah and then there are several other statuses as well that is what it does and similarly if you go to item here you have a requirement 
for line item also. So there's a requirement, there's a conditions for header data to copy. And there can be conditions for line item data to be copied. That is why these requirement routines comes at the header and they also come at the line item. They come twice. So here we have order requirement. There's a 101. We can see the 101 also. So if we go back and see the 101, and if we go back header, and we look at the program, it will take you to program. Check for conditions. Means system will check certain conditions only if those conditions are met, a sales document is allowed to be copied into the delivery document. Overall, delivery status of the item. If the status of item is okay, go ahead. If the status of item is not okay, don't allow. Incompleteness is status concerning delivery. Incompleteness. Now, what is the meaning of it? That basically means document has to be completed. If document is incomplete, do not allow that. And it does the same thing. It does not allow the document. It is stops. It is stops. It is many other things. Completely process. If your if your order is already done, fulfilled, and because that order is completely fulfilled and done, therefore system will not allow that further processing. Say you're done. Nothing to be added here. And then it will not allow any further processing. This a small program will control that. And so and so forth. These are the indicator. So we talked about there are copy requirements. Copy requirement basically means when system is copying one document to another document, under what conditions this document would be copied. For example, in a quotation in sales order, these are some examples. Quote customer is same. If customer is different, don't allow. So between two documents, customer has to be same. If item is not complete, because item is done, there is nothing to be copied. There should be some open quantity. If there is no open quantity, then nothing else for us to do. There should be some open quantity for us to copy. And we look at the, some of these routines called 001. There are some item level, some schedule line level, and there are various routines. And this is the, the routines we can see here. You know, 501 and 201 requirements, data transfer routines. And that is what is here. And these routines are there in sales order also, delivery also, billing also. Remember, we talked about different combinations. I want to talk to you about transaction code VOFM. So there is a transaction code. Another transaction code we are add adding. And that transaction code is called VOFM. VOFM. Make a note of that. This is important transaction code. VOFM is a transaction code which provides a single screen to process all those different routines. And there could be many, many more routines as well. So let's look at the VOFM object. 
So I type here transaction code VOFM. And then we come here, maintain requirements and formulas. And here we have a copy requirement, which we saw. Data transfer requirement, which we just saw. Then these requirements are not there in copy control. They are also applicable in many other areas, like for example, pricing. We have not done the pricing. In the pricing also, there's a requirement routines. These routines or these ABAP routines are there in the sales as well. They are there in output also, account determination also, material determination also, listing also, exclusion also, free good also. Because they all are working on the basis of condition technique. We look at the copy control today. So if you look at to copy control today, these are the one we looked at it. If we select that here, if you go back to the code, we, this is what we saw, the code. This is a, so V of M is one transaction which basically allow you to have access to all routines, where there's a copy routine and copy routine for orders, for delivery, for billing, for sales document whether this is a data transfer routine. So we are transferring the data from order to delivery, delivery to billing for the other units. These are the requirements, not only related to copy, but also in pricing. When you're doing pricing topic, which we have not done yet, you can check that in outputs, in account determination, in material listing, in exclusion. And then there are different formulas also. These are the scale formula, condition based formula, condition value formula, and all these different formulas are used in case of pricing. So when we do pricing, we will talk about, but these formulas, these requirement routines, these data transfer routines, these requirement for pricing, output and listing and exclusion for output determination, account determination are very important. That is why SAP SD, there's a transaction code VOFM and using this VOFM, you can combine all these requirement routine in one place. We have seen in the copy control, we configured copy control. In the copy control, we saw that how without copy control, it was not allowed. And when we create a copy control, then how copying of an order to the delivery was allowed. So we saw required routines, we saw example of a transfer routine, and there are other routines as well. So that is the this unit today. And then um, copy control. This is a good breaking point because I don't want to start the new topic now. Uh, and uh, we will continue next week. Please make sure to do all these exercises class today and class yesterday and some of these configuration classes which you have done are important classes. So that basically means, let me recap some of the configuration we have done, right? So we did configuration of sales document type. We configured our own sales document. We talked about what different customizing it controls. We also did a customization of item category. We did that customization as well. We configured a new item category also. Then we also created a schedule and category configuration as well. We configured our own schedule and category. We also configured our own schedule and category determination. Then we configured item category and then we also configure our item category determination. We did both. And then we have a copy control. So we did the configuration of a copy control. And yesterday we see that how the completion rules are defined at item category. So chapter number four, chapter number five, chapter number six, chapter number seven, 
there are various fundamental configurations for sales module. Read them. Thank you. We'll stop now and we'll continue next week from where we left today. Thank you. Is the copy from delivery to sales sort of possible? Delivery to sales depends. But why will you do it? So in the sales document, billing document is the last document, then why will we copy billing? Why we copy billing to sales order? No, we copy billing to sales order. That does happen because, for example, uh, in case of return, so when return product comes in, in case we may be creating a return order with reference to an original invoice. So customer says, this is my invoice. I'm returning, give my money back. Then you create a sales order with reference to the billing. That actually happened quite often. Yes, it. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you, Sohil. Thank you for good. Thank you for positive comment. Thank you, Rupali. Thank you, Osman. Thank you, Nis Nisit. Thank you, Jasveer. Thank you, everyone. Any questions before we uh, stop the class today? Any questions? Thank you, Abhijit. <clears throat> okay, so let's recap uh, some of the important configuration we have done. We have done the configuration sales document type. We check what configuration it does. We did the configuration of item category. We did a configuration of item category determination. We did the configuration of schedule and category and schedule and category determination. Then we did a configuration. We checked configuration related to completion rule to the item category. And today we did a configuration of copy control. Okay. This is some of the fundamental configuration for sales module. We'll continue next week where we end today. Thank you. Please take care. Bye.